Okay, this week we're going to start to look at a case series on a squat and today we're going to, on the squat with Jay we're going to focus on his ankle and foot mobility because we can identify those the main causes. Let's go ahead and have a look at Jay's squat first. So just a regular squat. Go ahead. And so the things that we're looking for here is the orientation of this knee in relation to the foot. You can already see that the foot is collapsed in here as well. Go ahead and stand up. We can also see that the depth wasn't quite where it needs to be. Okay, so obviously we need to address things like the motor control and the actual squat, strengthen that. But today we're going to focus on the ankle and just and the foot and just see what's going on in there. So go ahead, squat down one more time. Good. So you can see that that right knee is shooting inwards, and if you compare that in relation to the left one, that is also going in. The right one seems to have a little bit more trouble. Okay. Now go ahead and stand up. Easy way to start to kind of resolve this or start to figure out what's going on is if I have Jay to squat with his heels on the plate and, and just a little narrow. What this is going to basically do is just going to give him a little higher heel which means that he doesn't need quite as much calf mobility or ankle mobility to get this. So go ahead, squat down. And you can see there's a significant difference in the orientation of that knee on either side. Okay, we actually did some pre-work on that right side so it's almost starting to get better than the left now. Go ahead and stand up. So it would be easy to just think that, hey, this is an ankle mobility problem, let's mobilize the ankle using the whole motor control, joint, sliding surface, muscle kind of strategy. But we discovered something else as well. If you look at Jay's feet, you can see that they're relatively flat, right? And that could be because of the hips, or it could be a structural foot thing, but we're going to try to keep it simple today. So I'm just going to have Jay squat with his heels, the inside of his heel, so half of his heel on the inside is going to be on the plate and just see how his squat looks like now. Try those knees out. Good. So you can see a significant change in his positioning. Now are there still things that we want to worry about in his back and otherwise? Yeah, for sure. But what you can see that it's much easier for him to drive that knee out in that position, keep driving the knees out hard and to maintain that foot orientation without it turning out excessively. Go ahead and stand up. So is this an ankle problem? Is it a foot problem? Yes, it's both. A couple easy ways to start to address this. First one, the best way to stretch it and mobilize it is going to be to do the actual movement. So I could just have Jay keep something underneath that inside of the heel and just squat. Quite simple way to, to get some good reps in. Maybe he does this before he uh, gets into a workout. He can do this with other forms of squat therapy at the same time. No problem. Okay. The other way that we could start to address that foot problem which is basically this subtalar joint in here and this mid tarsal joint in here. Actually, let's, let's have a look how we discovered that this definitely is a foot problem. So if you take that inside on there. So now we are, what we're doing is, remember on that, that inside of the front foot on both sides. Just keep the foot straight, keep the foot straight, but keep it just on the inside. Now let's have you squat. And that's about all we have. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm imposing a demand in, in the front of his foot that the rear of his foot can't handle. Okay? Ideally his foot would be more in this kind of position but he just can't handle it at this point. So squat with the plate inside of the heel and this is going to work for you regardless whether you have a problem or not. It's going to be a pretty easy way for you to squat. The second thing I can take him here uh, on the other side. Let's go against the wall and put the inside of the heel on this plate and then just do the previous drill. So what Jay is going to do is he's just going to use his other leg to drive the movement into that joint in here. So we pre-positioned this joint into the position where it isn't normally and he's using the other leg to drive the motion in here. If you don't quite get the biomechanics of this, don't worry about it, it's relatively complex but know that this movement is going to be really helpful. And Jay, just drive that leg all the way here, touch my hand with that leg. There we go and go back. Okay, so it's one way to start to build the mobility back in that subtalar joint. Good, and come off. The other thing that we could do apart from these drills is obviously always look at that skin interface. And with Jay, there's a lot of, you know, he plays basketball and things like that. So there's some micro trauma in the, around that Achilles area. So one thing we can do is if you lie on your front, the good old ball. You could do this with the, uh, the bone saw thing that Kelly showed a couple weeks back or a week ago or so or you could just have a friend like me 
who's willing to hurt you slightly for your own good. So if I look at his skin here, it's not sliding very well. The good old lacrosse ball. Only do this if you're qualified. Don't ask your friend if it hurts because they might tell it does. You might have to stop. They know it's good for them. I'm only kidding. Don't do this if you don't know exactly what you're doing. And then we can test, retest, J squat <coughs> after that. So it's going to be a bit of a long term process, but we should see some change in his range already in that capacity. If you compare that right knee now to go all the way down, Jay, if you compare that right knee to the left in that positioning, we see that it's definitely improved on this side. So it's going to be a bit of a long, long path for Jay to get that back up, but we start by building that arch, getting the foot mobile again to a degree that we can, work on the ankle interface, and then we would move up to work on that hip.